Hi everybody, this is Scott Sharp with Fretboard Toolbox and today we're going to look at the six main chords in the key of G major on a ukulele. And we're going to use my Essential Ukulele C Tuning Edition today and I'll show you how to build uh, simple chords in the key of G major. Um, we'll learn the 1-4-5 chords and the 2-3-6 chords and uh, we'll see if by the end you've got something to play with. I'll also show you some chord progressions with them and, and give you something to get started with. Let's take a look and see how it works. All right, if you go to uh, www.fretboard-toolbox.com and you can click on soprano and concert uke or tenor ukulele, those are both tuned to C tuning, and then you'll scroll down and you can click on the Essential Ukulele Interactive Edition. So you just click on Look Inside, and when you do, the Essential Ukulele Preview pages will pop up. And scroll down from there, and we'll look at the key of G major today. Uh, the other keys that are in this book are A major, C major, D major, and E major. So those are your, your most common major keys, your first five major keys to learn to play all the chords in. But today we're just going to look at the key of G major and uh, I'll show you how that works. So let's start by looking at the major chords in the key of G major. When you click there, you will find the chord jig here. And the chord jig shows the three main major chords in the key of G major. That's your one chord, which is G major, your four chord, which is C major, and your five chord, which is D major. So we'll start with the G major chord. And G major chords on every instrument are built out of the notes G, B, and D. And even if you don't memorize that, just knowing these green circles will help you find all the G major chords. So if we know G majors are made of G, B, and D, or these green circles, then we can come down and look at the chord layout, the fretboard layout, and here you'll see all the G's, B's, and D notes all circled here in green. So to play a simple G major chord, what you'll need to know is that <clears throat> this part of your ukulele right here is called the nut. Uh, it's white here on my ukulele, and on my toolboxes, the nut is in black. So anything to the left of the nut is going to be the open strings. So the four strings on a ukulele are G notes, the three strings are C's, the two strings are E's, and the one string is an A note. Okay, my ukulele is tuned with a low G, so I have a low pitch G here, and that helps me solo and things like that. But um, the uh, if your ukulele has a high pitch G or a, yeah, a higher octave G, it's still the same thing. So we just need to be able to see where can I play G's, B's, and D's. So I want to be able to strum all four strings here, and I want to be able to play only G, B, and D notes. So if I strum the o the four string open, that's already a G. So I'm good to go there. I, I can just leave that open. The third string's a C, and I don't want that for a G major chord. So I can come up here to the second fret where I can play a D note. The second string is an E, and I don't want an E, but I can come up here to the third fret and play a G. So those first three notes are G, which is open, D on the second fret of the third string, G on the third fret of the second string, and then on the first string, I'm gonna hit the second fret because it's a B note. So I'm gonna make a little triangle right here, and that's gonna give me a G major chord. So that's G, D, G, B. And I can also add this B note on here because that is also part of the chord. But if you wanna know the simplest way to play a G major, it's, it's this little triangle right here. So that's my, that's my G chord, and I can strum on that. And then if I come up to, back to the chord jig, I can see my four chord is called a C major, and C majors are made of the notes C, E, and G. And that's on every instrument. That's the cool part. If you learn which notes make up the chord, then you can play them on any instrument. So on my interactive book, you can click on C major here, and then if you scroll down, you'll be able to see uh, where all those C, E, and G notes are found all over the fretboard. So I can leave this fourth string open for a C major because it's a G note, which is part of the chord. I can leave the three strings open because that is a C major, or that's a C note, which is part of the chord. I can leave the two strings open because that's an E note, which is also part of the chord. But I don't want an A note because that's not C, E, or G. So I can come up to the third fret and I can play a real simple C major on a ukulele just by holding the third fret. 
If I want to know a more advanced way to play the same C major, I can play C, E, G, C, 5th fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret, 3rd. That looks like this. But today we're just going to work on these basic chord shapes. So if I play G major and I go to C major, those chords sound good together because they're in a couple different keys together. So here's G major, C major. So once I've got those two chords down, then I can go back and see what the, four, the five chord is. And the five chord in the key of G major is a D major, and it's made of the notes D, F sharp, and A, again on every instrument. So if I click on D major and scroll down, then I can see where are my D, F sharp, and A notes on the ukulele. Now there's a couple different ways to play this or to, to hold these, but pretty much everyone in their first D major chord is going to try to hold the A, D, F sharp, and then leave the A note open. So I kind of have a bendy pointer finger, so, so I play it like this sometimes. Sometimes I, so I'm using this first finger to bar those first three notes, but I'm leaving the E. I'm leaving this string open. I can play it like this. So there I'm holding, with my middle finger, I'm holding the F sharp note on the second string, and then I'm barring the A and D notes on the fourth and third string. You can also try to get all three fingers on there. But in every case, I'm still playing D, F sharp, and A notes. And so I'm just trying to grab these three. However works best for you, try some different ways and see what works. But the trick is I want to be able to play the G major chord, C major chord, D major chord, and be able to play, go back to the G. So what you can do is, <clears throat> If you go back up to the chord jig here, um, then you can uh, scroll down below the chord jig and see some common G major chord progressions. And the reason I wanted to know these chord progressions is I want to be able to practice playing through those, uh, to play a 1-5-1, one, one, which is G major, D major, G major, and to play a 1-4-5, which is G, C, D. And to be able to practice those, what I've done is back on the Fretboard Toolbox website, if you go onto the home page, or any page really, and you click on 200 free uh, jam tracks, then you scroll down and there's those same chord progressions again. And if you click on that box, then you can have looping tracks that will play uh, all those chord progressions. And the very first chord progression is just all G major. So if I click on that on the slow tempo here, I have all three, uh, all those tracks on three different tempos. But just practice playing a G major for a little bit. And work on just being able to strum that chord. Work on different strumming techniques. And once you've got G major down and you know what you're doing there, then you can practice some different chord progressions. Like if I want to play a G, D, G chord progression, it's called a 1-5-1 one, one progression, then I can come down here and I can practice going from G major, there's your G major chord, D major, back to G. So you want to get good at practicing all these different common chord progressions because you're going to switch between those particular chords all the time. To play G, C, D, uh, I can play the one chord here is G major, C major is the four chord. Listen to how that four chord pushes you away from the root. And the five chord has this tension that leads you back to the one. Let's hear it again. G major is the one, C major is the four, it pushes you away. Every key, the four chord pushes you away. Five chord always has tension that leads you back to one. 
The other thing you can do with these jam tracks is if you already know these chords and it seems too easy, then you can see what page to use with a complete or an essential toolbox edition. And the G major keys are always free on all my books. And you can see which notes you can practice soloing with. And uh, I'll do some later videos showing how to solo on these different, uh, to these different chord progressions. But if you want to just jump ahead and practice, here, here are those uh, notes that you need to solo in some different keys. Let's do a, 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 G, D, G, a G, D, C progression, a 1, 5, 4 real quick. So now we're going to go from the 1 chord, which is G major, to the 5 chord, D major, C major is the 4 chord, back to G, G, D, C, G. So remember, you can always go back and look at the toolbox and see how to build those chords if you forget how to do one or the other. The, uh, the three minor chords in the key of G major, your two chord is called an A minor, three chord is a B minor, and the six chord is an E minor. So let's click on the A minor and you'll see that the A minor is built out of the notes A, C, and E. So the difference between major and minor chords is that major chords always use notes in the 1, 3, and 5 columns. So if we go back to G major real quick, you can see the G major chord is the note in the 1, 3, and 5. And that's 1, 3, and 5 out of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti. Out of those seven notes, it's the 1, 3, and 5 that always make major chords. C major is the 1, 3, 5. D major is the 1, 3, 5. But if we do the minor chords, minor chords are really similar to majors. They use the 1 and 5 notes, but they take the third note and do what's called flattening it. So an A major chord would be the A, C sharp, which is in the 3 column, and then E. And an A minor chord is going to be A, C, and E. So if I want to see how to play an A minor, I just need these red circle notes. Even if you don't understand flattening notes and stuff, that's not a big deal. But just come down and, and see where the A, C, and E notes are. So I can, the easiest A minor, it's a nice one finger chord when you learn your first A minor. Uh, on the four string, I don't want a G because that's not part of A, C, and E, but I can come up here to the second fret and play an A note. That looks like this. And then I left the other three open, the three string, the two, and the one, because those are all A, C's, and E notes. So this is an A minor chord. And if I add this third fret on, Adding the third fret still a C note, so it's still an A minor chord. But the most basic A minor to start with is just one finger on the fourth string, fourth string, second fret, and it's that A note, and then you leave the rest open. So there's my A minor. If I want to play a B minor chord, the three chord, then I need the notes B, D, and F sharp. I can click on that and scroll down to my B minor chord. And B minor is the same shape as A minor, it's just shifted up two frets. So instead of playing 2nd fret, open, 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 I'm playing 4th fret, 2nd, 2nd, 2nd. Now the way I play that is I take the, uh, my middle finger on the 4th fret of the 4th string, and then I bar these first three frets with my first finger. Now listen to how minor chords have sadder sounds. Here's an A minor. Here's a G major. So G major has a happy sound, C major has a happy sound, D major has a happy sound, but A minor has a sad sound, B minor has a sad sound, because minor chords just have sad sounds for some reason. Uh, and then if we want to play the, the six chord, a six chord in the key of, of G major is an E minor. It's made of the notes E, G, and B. So I can click on that E minor and scroll down to the E minor chord. And to play an E minor, there's a couple different ways I could do it. One is I can leave the fourth string open because it's already a G, and E minors are made of E, G, and B notes. And then I can play the fourth fret, third fret, and second, which is probably the easiest one to get started with. And so that looks like this. So I'm playing the open G, 
I'm playing the E on the third string, fourth fret, the G on the second string, third fret, and the B on the first string, second fret. And the trick is that you're not trying to memorize every chord and which notes they're made of. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is the shapes. And like you saw with A minor and B minor, those shapes, those shapes, they, they, uh, they shift. And so the, the same shapes work all up and down the fretboard. But, uh, but you're just trying to build these shapes in your head and get an idea for where these patterns are. So let's play one chord progression to finish up here that has an E minor in it. So to do that, we'll go back to the key of G major. And we're going to look at this chord progression here. It's called a 1, 6, 4, 5. So it's G major, E minor, C major, and D major. So I can go back to the jam tracks here and scroll down to the 1, 6, 4, 5 progression. So it's G major, E minor, C major, D major. And at first it's going to be hard to switch between these chords, but if with some practice it won't be any problem at all. And uh, so let's get that track playing. And then we can look at, let's look at an E minor while we play it. Here's the C. I mean the D, here we go. There's G. E minor. C major, D major, one more time, G major, E minor, C major, D major, back to G. So uh, that's about it for today. I hope that gives you something to play with here. And, and learning to build those shapes is going to be huge for you. And, uh, and then using those notes in white boxes that were in the toolbox is going to be the notes you're going to use to solo with. So when you're ready for that, I'll have a soloing video coming up here. But uh, I hope you have something new to try today. And I appreciate you taking a look. And I've got fretboard toolboxes for a whole bunch of different instruments. So if you find it useful, check out the Essential Editions. And you can see color. Uh, colored circles to show you where the chords are built in all those common keys. And once you get that method, if you understand how the toolboxes work, then what you can do is check out a complete edition, which is an all black and white book that has all 14 major, minor, and blues keys. And you can see how to build all the chords and where those notes are found all up and down the fretboard in every key. So I appreciate your time and thanks for taking a look. And if you found something useful, please subscribe and, and share it. And uh, if you have any suggestions or comments or questions, let me know in the comments section and I'll get back with you. Thanks for stopping by.